So here's my pull-up bar project for the week. And uh, from where my pull-up bar is mounted, it hangs at just above eight feet, which is what I need to be at full hang without bending my knees and still have my legs off the ground. Um, I used four by six beams. They, are, they were 12 feet long. I had them cut to 11 foot. Uh, I had to put them uh, just over 30 inches in the ground for the frost line in Ohio. You don't want to dig too short and then a heavy freeze comes and pushes your post up out of the ground. For perspective, it's very deep. I mean, this is a 48 inch level and it goes way down there. So this is a commitment once you start building one of these. Uh I'm going to make stairs for a ladder that's going to go down this side and then that ladder will also connect to a set of parallel bars. Provided that they are all equal in length, all I need to do is attach this. Uh, I'm just hand tightening these in to begin with and then I'm going to use a pipe wrench to snug them up. Just like that. See that? Nice and level. Okay, so we got the ladder done today, and I'm gonna use this not only to have a little bit of help for my wife and son to be able to climb up and do pull-ups, but this can also be used for calisthenic drills. You can uh, hang from one of the rungs with your body against the rest, almost use them like a stall bar. Uh, you could do like human flag type practice on these uh, and various other exercises. You could even put your leg on the bottom post and do like uh, Bulgarian split squats. Um, the only thing left to do today is put some uh, concrete in. I'm just using a quick set concrete, uh, quick reap. I think it takes like 40 minutes to set up. Uh, you basically just put the bag in, you add water until it's good and wet. They say up to a full gallon. I won't need that much to get it good and soupy. Um, I'm gonna kind of poke some air holes down into the concrete so that the water goes down in there real good and saturates. But by and large with concrete, as it hardens, it pushes the excess water up and out. So if you overwater it a little bit, it's not that big of a deal. It's still going to set up really hard. So uh, that's, uh, that's it for today, and we'll bring you back when we put up the parallel bars. All right, so we've got a... Uh, crossbar between the two four by six beams that's going to be for my son to step on to reach the parallel bars because I think they're gonna be a little bit high for him but it's also going to help me keep them uh, parallel to each other so that I get good spacing make it easier to drop them into that little hole that I dug there okay so I admit I had to dig up half of Ohio to get those post holes set I wish I was better at shoveling but what you find is when you start digging deep in the ground you need more and more room for the shovel made better sense just to make a big trench. And then I laid my posts in there, from there. I just used my uh, parallel bars to measure out the distance away from the ladder that I was going to dig that trench. And then once I had it, I'm just bolting everything to the frame of the pull-up bars and leveling it out and then filling it in. And I'm not really measuring to do that. Okay, posts are in the ground and bars are looking pretty level. There's the other side looking pretty good. So this is our finished product. This is our uh, pull up and dip station that we built. Uh, I'm just going to go over it. Uh, some, of the, some of the things that I did, uh, some of the things I might consider doing different. You mean um, you built? Yeah, that's what I meant. Was you that, said we. Well, you helped. You helped me, remember? A little. Yeah, you held some stuff up for me. So anyway, um, we built this out of uh, four by six by 12 foot uh, posts. Um, I did the 
six inch side for the pull up bars and for the ladder. Um, and just to make everything match, I did use four by six posts for my parallel bars, but um, I turned them to the four inch side to match the back of the ladder. We went with uh, one inch galvanized pipe. This is the pre-cut and threaded stuff they have at Home Depot. Um, I believe that's the 48 inch bar, uh, one inch diameter, threaded. Um, I went with the three quarter inch threaded, 24 inch long uh, pipe for the ladder steps. Um, I used all galvanized um, floor flanges, uh, which are these, and they help keep the bars from spinning. If you, if you just drill holes in your wood and then try to secure that, your, your bar is gonna spin. I, the route that I took was definitely a lot more money. Um, buying a lot of galvanized metal parts is not cheap. Um, all in all, we probably had $400 into this, um, but I think it's totally worth it. We're gonna get a lot of use out of it. My wife and I both do a lot of pull-ups. Son Colton is, is a gymnast. He's, he's working on strength all the time. My middle sons are you know, old enough that they like to work out. So it's something the whole family can use. So depending on the uh, floor flange that I was using, I had to use either a quarter inch uh, by three inch screw or a 5 16 um, I went with the bigger screw wherever I could, but uh, the smaller floor flanges, like the ones that hold the ladder in place, uh, would not take a 5 16 So I had to go down to quarter inch for that. Um, the one thing you wanna be careful about with those is I found that when I was using my power drill, um, you don't wanna be overly aggressive with a quarter inch galvanized screw. Uh, you almost feel like you could easily apply too much torque and spin the head right off of those things. So go slow, you may wanna drill a pilot hole and then um, you may wanna take it almost all the way, but maybe finish it with a ratchet. I wanna consider getting an auger. Um, you definitely want to call your local utilities company to have anything marked before you go digging that far into the ground. Um, in Ohio, we have oops, and it's just a phone call and they come out a couple days later and, and mark where all your cable lines are and power lines and gas lines. And just so you know what you're getting into before you dig down that far. Um, I hand shoveled it. Um, this playground that we're on is near a sewer drain and I wanted to make sure that there weren't any um, pipes or anything that I was going to run into with an auger, so I did hand dig it. It takes a lot longer doing that. Um, I waited until after it rained for a couple of days so the ground was a little bit softer, but it's a commitment and uh, you want to know that before you get into it. I think the best piece of advice I could give somebody is really worry about the first beam. You want this guy to be perfect because everything else can kind of build off there. I'm not somebody that really knows how to measure to find square for everything but I know how to get something perpendicular to the ground. You know, I used my level everywhere, all over this thing. And once I got this guy perfect, everything else was just a matter of building off of this perfect post. Uh, so my process took me a couple of days to do, um, but I feel like everything came out nice and square. Everything is exactly as it should be and very, very sturdy. So um, consider that before you build one of these. So, uh, I think that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video and it motivates you to do something similar in your own yard with the uh, coronavirus and everybody locked down. It's nice just to have a gym at your house that you can work out at. You know, you're always going to come up with an excuse not to do something. I think that more people need to be accepting of the situation that we're in and maybe get creative with their exercise and find a way to make it happen. So thanks for watching. Go ahead. Oh, good one. Be sure to like and subscribe, guys. I hope you like this video. <laughs>